saw was just foreign things to me. It wasn't until I rode my bike up the hill and I could see a ball kind of flowing up in the air. And I rode my bike up there and I see these five boys about my age. They kind of hover, right? Like boys do. All of a sudden the one guy comes back and he says, you know, hey, uh, like, don't get me wrong, I understand English, right? You know, a little, little gibberish, maybe, right? <laughs> yeah. And I tell you, this guy comes up and he says, hey, we're short some players. You want to come and play? We're playing scrub. I didn't know what scrub was. I knew what baseball was. And of course, in my own way, I'm like, yeah, yeah, right? Start to laugh, smile a little bit. He reaches out his hand and he says, my name's Robbie Adamson. That's Ryan Rayner, that's Troy Carlson, Chad Walston, Mike Favreau out there in the field. Come on and play. Folks, I went on and had a glorious day of ball. Glorious day of ball. Afterwards, Robbie took me back to his house, which was just down the hill of King George Catholic School, the field where we were playing. Took me back to his house and said, Rick, you know, we gotta stop playing because we all go home to dinner. We all eat with our families, right? My mom and dad are expecting me, so I need to go home, we're gonna eat, but come back here tomorrow morning, okay, because we're gonna do it all over again. I'm like, all right. Rode my bike home, folks, those 15 miles or so. And as I was getting close, just like the picture of that window with those gentlemen back there, I could see my mom and that same look, almost like she had not even moved from that spot. And as I came in, the feeling even inside the home changed a little bit because I was able to tell her that I got connected. I got connected with something in the new place for which I was living. Well, folks, the next morning, about 6.30 in the morning, I'm across the road of Robbie's house, across the street in a bush, right, with my bike, you know, waiting for life to happen inside his house that was just pitch dark, pitch dark. Sure enough, a light comes on. And I start to get these feelings, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see, see what's happening. And I waited a little bit, because I'm sure they just woke up, right? All right? Me tish off be ajip me bo man alain do taba nes. Me go ma wus to kia vikinan. Rode my bike over the road, right? Pedaled it just right there. Me go ma chi ye wa kia gan. Or she just said to an oa. Do taba nes. My little car, my bike. Parked it right up against his house. And folks, and as I walked up his stairs of his porch, got to his front door, walked right into his house. <laughs> Mom is standing there, never met her in my life, pink robe, towel around her head, looking at this guy with this big grin on his face. This, I'm here kind of thing, right? And she just looks at me, you know, and is, you know, I'm Ricky, right? You know, like she was supposed to be expecting me at that hour. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, Big Bob, the cop, you know, comes out and, hey, Joe, Big Bob Adamson, right? You know, comes out. Sure enough, his sister Corleen and Ryan come out of their rooms. And then I see Rob coming up the stairs, you know, just sort of wiping his eyes out. And, and I notice they're having a conversation. Well, at the same time, they're having a conversation. I'm helping myself to juice. You know, just, just, you know, making myself welcome in their house. Well, we had a glorious start to our day there. And on our way to play ball, Robbie goes to me. He says, hey, Ricky, um, you need to knock before you come in here. I'm like, what? You know, folks, I had no clue. I know Kamehwani First Nation, just like Waswaganing, I'm sure. Our relativity to each other as a community and as a family and as a close-knit people, we knew everybody. Everyone was welcome in our homes. Our families encouraged play. Our families, if anything was in our homes, it's also yours. And we respected that. So I had no clue that there was some sort of protocol, some courtesy, let's call it, that I needed to have to come into somebody's home. No clue whatsoever. 
well, hey, we went on and had a great day of ball, I'll tell you. You know, all day long again, you know. And at the end of the day, Robbie says once again, he says, all right, we got to go home and eat. Okay? We got to go home and eat. So, but Rick, right back here again tomorrow, you know. We'll go at it again tomorrow. And just hearing the stories of these guys, the things that they were involved in, you know, the sports, the activities, the fishing, the fun stuff right there on that lake. I'm thinking, man, this is feeling like home again. I'm thinking, this is the stuff I did. I swam, I fished, I hunted, all of these things, right? Well, I went home, and this time as I'm, as I'm riding my bike home, I could see my mom and a little better face about her. Not quite smiling, you know, with the dimple. But I tell you, you know, I could see it. I could see her spirit, folks. And I didn't even need to ask. I could see it. I could feel it riding my bike up to this new home that was still foreign to me. And as I walked in, I had this opportunity to share with her this connection again with this new place. This feeling, this positivity that I had, the anger that I had was subsiding in me. Instead, I was replacing it with this glory of just simple play. At that moment, folks, I sat down with her and it was the right time where she shared with me the things that had been going on for years. She shared with me that my dad, when he was younger than my age, him, his four sisters, his three brothers were ripped away from their house and taken to residential schools under the threat of law and armed forces ripped away from their homes. And he only told my mom the atrocities that were committed on that man for protecting his siblings. He took the beatings. He took the rapes. Every day he did that. And died in a bottle at 55. Some 12 years after I made this move. Very, very real. And that house and that dad not only lives 20 miles up the road, black, white folks, that same dad, that same type of household is seconds away from this place. The stories I tell you. I hug my daughter, 11 years old, tight, as much as I can, as much as I can. And folks, I hug my students the same. Hug my students the same. 6.30 the next morning, I'm outside Robbie's house, cross the street in a bush. <laughs> waiting for life to happen inside that house. It's dark, folks. It's dark. You know how it is that early in the morning. It's dark. The cold, I can feel it. The anticipation, I can feel it. Right? Lights come on. This time I waited about, I bet you, 45 minutes. It felt like an hour. But I tell you what, I'm waiting there, right? Bike in the bush, big oak tree, you know? Big oak tree. And sure enough, I'm thinking, ah, you go, Aja. You understand what that means, folks. It's time, right? Iguaja. If you speak Ojibwe, they can feel me here, right? You know? Iguaja. Me tish api ajip me ba man o andu taba nes. Me go ma us nikke me kanang o ajip me ba man o andu taba nes. Me tish ma chigi i waki gan aji sese toan o andu taba nes. Me tish aja gud ta kip toan o a waki gan. Me tish ni wa shkwan dem aji gibe chian. Walked up his stairs, stopped at his front door, knocked on the door, and walked right into his house. <laughs> <coughs> and folks, this time, they're sitting at the table. And you know, I'm sitting there, I walk in, I'm not sitting, I'm standing there again, just, you know, big, big, you know what kind of grin, you know, hey, just letting it go, right? Grab some juice, 
grab some toast up there and I'm, I'm like, all right, hey, we're ready. And you know, big Bob, he's, you know, you know, and Robbie, I got this, Bob. I got this. Comes over and he pulls me aside and he says, of course, Rick, when you knock, you need to wait for someone to answer the door. <laughs> Folks, we have students erase the name Ricky White, erase the name Niga Nanakut. We have students walking through our doors every single day. And at Lakeland, they are coming in droves. They are coming in droves. What are you willing to do to make those connections? Imagine this, if I got my rear end thrown out of that house because I was a dirty, rotten, ignorant, rude person for <coughs> not knocking on that door and walking into that house and how dare you touch our food? Imagine if that is what I was met with. Folks, there is no racism in that. There is some ignorance. <coughs> Unknowing ignorance. When we have these things that are set in our way as an individual, those things don't feel good to others. We don't know any different, folks big difference between that and not knowing any better, right? No question, we want to teach our youth to be good people. Good, good people, right? Many of them don't know any different. It's your obligation. Your obligation. Every single one of you. And folks, at Circle of Life Academy, I planted this on Jim Boucher. Our drivers are sitting in this audience. Our cooks are sitting in this audience. Our custodians are sitting in this audience and they are getting the same message, the exact same message, okay? Because if that kid gets on that bus and the first thing that they see is a growling bus driver, They walk into an empty school without any warm welcoming and all they do is they walk in and here's this big place and all of a sudden here's this 800 student cafeteria and then all of a sudden there's 100 classrooms meshed in some kind of web thank you for the signs by the way I, I still don't know where I am <laughs> okay and I spent the full day here and I'm an adult 46 years old. I was lost yesterday. Absolutely lost. As Monday comes, folks, I have a few challenges, and these will come out as we go through the day. Your admin team came and visited us at Circle of Light, and they got to see as soon as the students came off the bus, there is a field of us, intentional, and purposeful folks right out there on that curb. Hey, welcome back, how's it going? And our radar is on, because I will tell you folks, okay, nine out of 10 kids have significant trauma right now. We are the heroin capital, okay? What I would say of the United States, okay? Opiate and drug abuse, on our reservations, it's like you taking a sip of your coffee, okay? The stories of that father, much like what you heard earlier, those are happening, maybe right now. When I say I saw some ghosts yesterday, folks, we have 800 kids here, I guarantee you at least 10% of them, that's 80 kids, are walking with the Robbie Adamson-like story right now. And you know how I know? I talked to that guy right there yesterday. Your dean of students, your nurse,
nurse, Kathy, who I met because I was locked out in the back. <laughs> She's somebody that I was looking for yesterday, right? You have these folks that are not working with the FUs of behavior folks, and pardon me for that, okay? Lucky I didn't even say it. <laughs> They're not dealing with that, folks. We're talking heavy trauma. You know a student is probably in placement of sorts, maybe even a 72 hour right now. And I saw that student walk in the hall. I saw that student head down in the classroom three times. These are real, right here, Lakeland Union High School. What are we gonna do about it? You are gonna get a pathway today towards some of that. And you know what? I've got a pile of books. You are not gonna get it in a book. You're not gonna get it with any more letters behind your name, folks. Yes, you need those books. I'll say it right now, Jim. There's Cody walking the hall. You need those folks. And as I met with your special ed folks yesterday, it's not, these are your kids, you deal with them, right? That's what we do. We, we, when we have so many students in front of us, these, you know, I, I, I got 25 other kids, I, I can't, this isn't happening, you know? I got a six foot five guy who's been missing from German, and you guys all know this guy, big, big ninth grade boy, barely in school doesn't have a clue what he's doing. And he was lip syncing. He was there singing German. Took him a little bit, right? And he was there. He got in there. And I wonder what that guy's up to. Just like I wondered about this young girl yesterday. Okay? We all have this Omavi J. Ng. Yote. Westruge. Ishtigwani. You're all good people. And that good is what's going to help in this. We all have this obligation. These are our students. They're not for you to help me out. Yes, we can get that help to put them in a good place to be in our class. When I started at Circle of Life Academy, folks, in 2015, I had a half time guidance counselor. And I tell you, there was a drug, drug epidemic then, just like there was 20 years ago. Our students don't change. In this age, especially the things that are happening. Today, I have a full mental health team on site, including a therapist, a CPSS worker, a case manager on site. I don't pay for them. It took me two years to lobby with the tribe to have them placed at our school. And yes, I went out and made connections with universities because school sites are expensive. That help are, is expensive, folks. Hard to find. So I went and I recruited four school site interns from a college university just an hour away. And we have them on site. I also contracted Again, just paying them gas. Two intern, <clears throat> intern therapists that are also on site. Full-time guidance counselor. And this year we hired a full-time school site. Folks, knowing that it is still not their problem. We talk openly about trauma-informed care talk openly about harm reduction because these words are these latest terms out here folks okay and yes there is some study that needs to happen on them and it's not about being lenient it's still having the highest of expectations right here it's about relationships it's about relevancy and it's about rigor right 
And I'm sure at some point that was flipped around where rigor, 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 pounded in there, right? Look at our graduation rates five years ago, 10 years ago. Piss poor. You're at 97% now, folks. That is hard work and kudos to all of you. You also have mid-50s proficiency rates in math. Huh? That means some 300 and some, okay? I won't say walking illiterate. What's the pathway to illiteracy there, SRO? How many of those are you gonna see, SRO, <coughs> in their 20s? Next year, when they leave here, yes, with a diploma. How many? Okay. As we go today, folks, you can feel the passion, okay? And this isn't, hey, the second it's that, it's about me, this top down. You don't have a guy that does that, I haven't seen that. He's pretty firm, I'll tell you that, you know, hey, he is. When we say firm, passionate about these kids. Passionate about all of these kids. You have the tools here, you know why? Your kids are coming in troves. You guys, you're, you're winning half the battle right now. Mid 90s percent attendance rate here, you know, they are here. When I walked the halls yesterday, I heard, I, I, I couldn't even, and I, and I have these super he, human ears, I'm telling you right now. I have, you know, you, know, you get that radar going, you know. I didn't hear a swear word. And I heard from Joe two seconds as I walked in the back door yesterday, hey? Man, there's a real Indian right there, man. Is what he said, you know, hey, look at the pony on that guy, right, you know, hey? Look at the braid on that guy, there's a real Indian there. Hey? I bet you know Joe, hey? Joe introduced himself to me. Good guy. Folks, as we go through this day, and you notice, As you notice, what? Shang Sweat, Shtabega Nea. How does our agenda, was it nine? It is what? See? <laughs> when you have that spirit, even these things don't necessarily matter. You ever hear about Indian time? Hey? Let me tell you what the real story is on Indian time. It's not that we want to be late, folks. It isn't. Remember, I grew up without electricity or running water for the first dozen years of my life. Time was there, huh? And you know what, Indian time, the true meaning of it is that we are gonna start when we are good and ready, okay? If I started right on the money here today, we would have had some folks that would have missed out on some stuff, just like in ceremony. That's how we calculate Indian time. We're not gonna start until we're good and ready, folks. You know, until you're comfortable. We don't want you to rush. You might forget something, okay? The other thing about Indian time is this. This is where my staff have definitely know this one. And I'm gonna share it with you all right now. We end when it ends, okay? <laughs> we do. There is. There's nothing to tell us. Ooh, hey, ooh, it is, it is, you know. I know we have schedules and everything in school. Don't get me wrong. And for my staff, there's a simple, simple signal. Okay. Simple signal. And anyone can do it to me. I don't get offended. Okay. Land the plane. Ricky. <laughs> Land the plane, Ricky. So I don't know, Jim. You can steal that one if you want, okay, you know? <laughs> How many of you would love to tell Jim? Everybody, raise your hand. Raise your hand right now, everybody in the room. You two back there, everyone raise your hand, okay? I know. We're gonna talk about choral responses too, by the way. We will be talking choral responses uh, on what effect that has rather than calling on individuals because you might as well teach a class to one or two. We all participated there, didn't we, okay? Didn't we? I'm going to send the spirit off here right now. Um, one of the other things 
I'm not just going to hide because I'm scared. <laughs> you all are my Linda right now, Linda Adamson. Um, another strong teaching, folks, and we use this quite a bit at Kula. Um, this again, you can borrow so much. You know, Gandhi once said, you know, people or children weren't born to hate. They weren't born that way. You know, you saw Obama tweet that after, you know, who was tweeting some stuff about Baltimore and all these other places that are just ravaged with things going on in America right now. The thing that we say is this, you know, as we have this relative way at our place, um, we look for the good. We always look for the good. You can tell I lost my chain of thought. It's back now. So I think that's my <laughs> I'm going to tell you something good right now. Teaching. Okay. And when you have this teaching, by the way, it is yours. Black, white, brown. When you share our teachings, it is yours. You can take it. Use it. The teaching is this. Those feelings that we get inside of us that in the English language gets translated to a challenge of nerves, right? Folks, in our way, those aren't nerves. Those are, those are all of our relatives, all of our friends, all of those good people that you know and you have in your lives, and they're just in there, and they're telling you that it's okay. They're telling you that as long as it's good, in that good way, you're gonna be fine. So go for it. It's not a nerve to be afraid of. And don't get me wrong, I say this to these young boys as well, if you're getting in that car to go rob that bank and you get those feelings and whatnot, yes, that is also your relatives trying to tell you there is a better way. When we think that we have anxiety in our minds and those things that just stretch us to the limits, we need those folks. Champion those things because again, your relatives that are both here and those that aren't, and those that are still yet to come, are telling you and they're sending you a message. Champion those things. Champion that way. As we go, I was also gifted with song and drum. So as you go on a health break, you probably like that too, don't you? How I characterize it, health break, okay? As we transition to the commons area, you're gonna get it, I'm telling you. You're gonna, hope you, hope you dress comfortably today. You're gonna be mixed in with people probably that you haven't talked too much, okay? You're gonna be engaged in some I'm gonna be honest with you, some of the content is gonna be, it's gonna drive to where you have those, those thoughts, those feelings. We'll talk about norms when we get in there. And this song is a teaching song that I composed, and I've left it with pretty much every school and a few communities that I've had connections with. And I have no problems leaving this song here. I have no problems leaving this song with Waswaga Ning. It's a song of teaching, folks. Okay? Kina amuata ne. Let's teach. Kini chan siya. All of our children. Kije minoya bematiziat. To live. To live in a good way. To teach them in that way to have a good life. Nikshanike. And in doing so, folks, we will have done a good thing. Okay? And it's about helping them. You don't have to stand. Okay? Because many times in ceremony and in spirit, sitting and receiving this is indeed the grace of this drum, the heartbeat of our people. This stick again made just from from scratch. Okay? Nothing in here mass produced. No 3D printer needed. <laughs> Beautiful signs coming, by the way. 
appreciate. Thank you. Hopefully, if I'm invited back again, I'll know where I'm going. Those beautiful signs fabricated right here. And I tell you, your students, just like you all will, will connect with this song. Oh. Because our songs, every one of our songs, do end with hi, hi, oh. They're gutter rolls. It's not the Atlanta Braves. Whoa! Oh my goodness, let me tell you, go back to Hollywood! <laughs> right? And that beat. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Not a beat known to any of our indigenous peoples goes like that. So those people are a bunch of fools as well. So any Cleveland Indian fans, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cheer to team on that drum beat and Chief Wahoo, pile of garbage hogwash, okay? But hey, cheer to team on. <laughs> With that, folks, think about some of the things that I shared here this morning. This is only the beginning of a day that I want to thank you all for stepping outside of some of the things that we have been programmed with in our minds. And let me fill some of the things that I have to share, not just from experience. I'm also a book study, no question. And you know what, in the end, just like what our special ed people say, just like what any mental health therapist will say, the things that we're gonna share today are good for kids. It doesn't matter <coughs> what race, the things that we're gonna be doing today are just overtly good for kids. Whether they're climbing a wall, never seen anything like it in my life, by the way. You know, unbelievable what's happening in that room. The teamwork. Or whether they're sitting right in your rooms, folks. The things that you'll have today, you will have some takeaways. So let's take a 10 minute health break. Go in peace. We'll see you. We're going to talk about this, by the way, over there, <laughs> over that way. I want to thank you all for having a seat. We'll see you in a little while, right here.